Welcome to Maine Media TV. I'm your host, Kai Whitaker. This week, we're doing the Black History Month edition. So today, we'll be having a conversation about black culture and rela race relations on our own campus. Here joining us today are some of TMUC's students from NAACP. Here we have... Uh, Victor Howe. President of uh, NAACP Unit 6809, member of Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated, Zeta Tau Chapter. Uh, my name is Dishani Cox, and I'm a member of the NAACP Chapter, wait, well, sorry, Unit 6809. My name is Emmanuel Allen. I'm a general member of the NAACP Unit 6809, and I'm a junior. Okay, well, thank y'all for joining us today. So we're just going to get right into it. So TMUC, at the time, East Texas State, integrated in 1964, so it's been 54 years. Do y'all believe that the campus celebrates Black History Month enough? Mm, I, well, to be honest, you know, it's, uh, I feel like it's up to the, the black students to celebrate Black History Month enough, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, as far as NAACP, we try to do our part, you know, such as throwing events you know, giving people enlightenment on uh, Black History Month, you know. But I feel like for all the organizations, I feel like they do what they do, you know. I feel like this year has actually been a good change compared to last year and the years before that, you know. But as far as um, Black History Month, I feel like students do put on for Black History Month organizations they really represent. I feel like it, like uh, Victor said, is I know the students are the ones that are spearheading different events to um, educate the student body on black history because it is not a popular topic, I guess you can say, um, in America, uh, black history is. So um, as a member of NAACP, you know, it is our job to educate them on you know their black culture and not just black culture but culture period so um, we do try very hard to um, educate and to make sure everybody knows their history because our history is very important but as far as the um, student body as a, like the uh, university as a whole I don't think that they consider it very important to celebrate Black History Month but I feel like the black students are trying to make uh, Black History Month a very important month mm -hmm. since it is the shortest. Right, we at least need effort from us. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. uh, I honestly believe like with the rise of new African American student organizations on campus, they've been doing a job collectively, uh, well a good job rather, as a whole um, with I would say bringing more African American centered events on campus, allowing for more people to become informed if they want to. So, okay. Well, do y'all believe? I mean, I know that we're all not the same major, but as far as like maybe like our freshman classes, we all have to have history. Do you think that they um, teach us a good a, a good amount of Black history? I guess do they mention it. No. Because I don't think we <laughs> they, no. they in our only, classes. They only really mention the slavery part of it yeah. and not, you know, not saying it's like up to date, but the up to date version of mm -hmm. everything that involves our black history mm -hmm. from slavery to 2018. So, um, you know, there's a lot of students that don't know anything about uh, the different organizations that happened in the 60s. You know, you know, you know, Martin Luther King Jr., you know, Malcolm X, you know, those right. people because, you know, uh, they're talked about. Um, vastly, vastly talked about. So, mm -hmm. you just don't feel like they talk about they, like it's, other, it's not really, it's not figures. a hot topic. And yeah. when you try to, you know, ask them to talk about it, I guess you can, I guess I can kind of say that uh, our history is whitewashed. Mm -hmm. So they try to make it, you know, try to uh, shorten it as, as, you know, make it as small as they can mm -hmm. so that they don't really have to discuss everything that involves black history. Right. I honestly feel like um, though they do offer a couple of African American history classes that they don't do a good job of making, I would say, like she said, a point of where we weren't just slaves mm -hmm. from Africa and then boom, here we are today. <laughs> So I would say that, I mean, if you mentioned the fact that we created peanut butter, 
the stoplight with the freezer, mm -hmm. the hot comb, different stuff like that. We as African Americans are not only good workers and stuff like that, but we're also innovative and we're ingenious and we're not given the credit that we're due. Right, because I'm sure a lot of people don't even know about the actual Black Wall Street there was. And yeah, I know and that we actually... Y'all have y'all's event, okay, you can talk about that. <laughs> uh, yeah, so we actually have an event titled Black Wall Street where we have students attend. You see uh, black entrepreneurs such as far as doing hair, making flyers, you know, anything that they do to make a purchase, to make a sale, or anything or make a profit you know uh we would like for them to come out to black wall street and uh showcase their uh talents and skills with the poster board uh cards anything that they have you know and uh, it's going to be sort of like main street like a co career fair basically mm -hmm. so they can express their talents <coughs> but this program is based off like the actual historical, I guess, block, Black Wall Street that there was, I guess, where was that at? Uh, that was actually in Tulsa, Oklahoma. It was in Oklahoma? Okay, yeah. I had to make sure, you know. But a lot of people don't know about that, you know, they yeah, just think yeah, this is see, an they event. Don't, they don't teach that in history book as well, mm -hmm. and that's just something, you know. I mean, although they do have, uh, they do offer classes African American history, you know. Right, that's uh, a whole class by itself. Yeah, but they don't really courses such as American history, uh, <laughs> early colonization <laughs> history. You know, right. they hardly talk about, uh, you know, how the slaves made an impact on everything that was built. Mm -hmm. They don't mention that. They just mention uh, Christopher Columbus. <laughs> uh, Christopher Columbus <laughs> explored America. But mm -hmm. Christopher Columbus, he didn't, how are you going to explore something that well, other people here. was here, you know? Right. So, I mean, that's your question last time. Nah, they don't hit, teach a lot of black history. You know. <laughs> well, if you're just joining us here on Main Media TV, we're here talking about the history and the culture here at uh, TMUC, the black history and the black culture. And um, I have a fun fact, I guess, for you all. Uh, Dr. David Talbot was the first African-American faculty member on this campus. And last year, the university named um, the Hall Languages after him, if y'all didn't know that. Um, was that good for our campus that we actually have a building, I guess, named after an African American, the first African American teacher? Oh yeah, for sure. I, I feel like that that was an amazing thing to do, you know, because uh, you know when people go in that building, they go downstairs and actually see, oh, David A. Tab, this man was actually black. Oh, he was picture. A black. Yeah, he got his picture. He got everything in there. He's actually uh, a member of the Omega Sci-Fi. Mm -hmm. uh, he uh, Omega Sci-Fi here. And, uh, you know, that's something, that's also a fun fact about them, too, you know. And I feel like that, that also, uh, it's a good thing for the student body to notice that that uh, there was actually black professors here, because you hardly see black professors at this campus mm -hmm. now, mm -hmm. you know. So I feel like that's interesting, you know. I feel like that, that was much needed, you know, being that he was the first black professor here, mm -hmm. so. Well, how do y'all feel? I believe um, it was a step in the right direction, and the fact that um, he was also a vital part of implementing black Greek organizations on campus, you know, that allows for people to, I would say, it opens their mind to want to do more research and stuff like that and possibly have other buildings or different places on campus that are named after African American history makers, I would say, on campus. Mm -hmm. I feel like that's really important for them to name the building after him, uh, given the fact that uh, this school was desegregated mm -hmm. 54 years ago, which is really not that long ago. It's not. Um, so to know that there was uh, someone on campus during the segregated times and an African American teacher at that, uh, it uh, it is it's a really good thing to hear about it, to know about it and to be able to embrace it on a predominantly white campus, so. Okay. Well, do y'all believe that our campus could do better with um, all race involvement? I mean, obviously, like you were saying about like the black Greeks, obviously, you know, they have their culture and have their thing and just the black community here in general, you know, we have our thing and the Hispanic community has their thing and the white community, but as far as all of us together, do you think that the campus could do better with integrating all of us in the same types of activities and involvement? Um, I feel like I feel like the C's office, they try to reach out to students because I know they send emails to all student body, mm -hmm. regardless of what race, anything. Uh, but I feel like 
it's gonna be hard to actually put all the all of the every together. all the student body together, you know. I feel like I don't feel like it's really just a big segregation, you know, but you can tell people is blacks they go to the club, you know, some blacks they go to the club, some people stay in their room, you know, some uh Hispanic groups they stick together and some uh white groups they stick together as well, you know. And I feel like that's just a culture thing, you know. Mm -hmm. You're going to go to what you're immune to. You know, sometimes it's hard for people to uh, actually talk to somebody that they're not used to or try to get to learn a different culture, you know. But as far as the school, I feel like the school, in a way, try, they, they do a pretty decent job, you know, with the seeds office. I, I feel like I uh, give all the seeds the, uh, <laughs> the praise because they actually do try to throw events for they everybody actually, to yeah. come out to. So I feel like it's, it, at the end of the day, it's, it's going to be hard trying to un unite all student bodies together, mm -hmm. you know. But you don't feel like it's a problem, it just... It uh, just do I feel like it's a problem? I feel like, hmm, I don't think it's really a problem, mm -hmm. you know. But I feel like, I feel like as far as like talking to other people, I feel like some people you have to talk to, you know, you, it's almost as if you're forced, you know. You, you have this young man in class that you never talk to, but you know he's the smartest person in class. <laughs> so why not seek help from him? Right. You know, and that's how I feel like uh, other races start communicating with each other by seeing them in class, what's up man, you good? Or going to the rec, some things work. just going to work, mm -hmm. going to the rec, you know, just talking to that person, like, oh man, this dude really is cool, you know, so that's how I feel like other minority groups make friends with uh, whites or any other group of ethnicity. I believe honestly that the accountability is with us as a whole, as a student body, not just the school, because they do give us the freedom now that we're desegregated in order to, well, they do give us the freedom to, you know, commune with each other and interact on different areas of campus and stuff like that. So I feel like as a unit, we segregate ourselves, okay, all black people go to the club because that's where they feel comfortable, mm -hmm. or said groups go to said events because they feel comfortable. So once we as a student body become comfortable with leaving our comfort zone mm -hmm. and opening our minds in order to, you know, see different organizations, events, and see p different people's perspectives, then that way we can go further with, you know, becoming more unified, I, I would say. Yeah, the, the main problem is complacency, um, sticking to what you know. So you have, you know, African Americans, we stick to each other because, I mean, we, that's, what have, we that's what we know, you know, and you have the Hispanics, they stick together, and then, you know, you have the white people, they stick together, but then, you know, we have various events where everybody does come together, and so it's kind of, it's, it's a great thing to see, but it is about, you know, wanting, ha wanting yourself to go out there and to, you know, try to um, embrace other cultures, other, you know, organizations, other events, other things like that. So it, it is on yourself to reach out, but um, it is, you know, it, it's about, it is really about complacency as a whole, um, not wanting to do, not wanting to reach out, mm -hmm. just sticking to what you know. Well, we just stay into what we know, but, you know, <laughs> Uh, being holding each other accountable that was a really good point because I mean I guess we can't necessarily put it on the school to make us all come together mm -hmm. it's really just the students wanting to come together but um, that is all the time that we have today um, thank you so much my wonderful guests from NAACP um, and that has been May Media TV I'm your host Kai Whitaker